Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, I am Subrata Sarkar from Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Kanpur. I welcome you to the course Introduction to Turbo Machinery. I'll begin the discussion with introduction and classification of turbo machines. So let's start the session. Contents of the lectures today are introduction, governing principle, classifications, and applications. The origin of the word turbo machinery is turbo. Turbo is a Latin word that means a rotating device. Hence, a turbo machinery is a rotating device that exchanges energy with the passing fluid. In reality, there are different kinds of turbo machines to cover the width of application. The applications are very wide in real life. However, a unified approach will be followed while analyzing these machines. What I like to mean that the central governing principle of different kinds of turbo machines is the same. So what are the governing principle? Let me explain here. Impeller is the heart of the turbo machines. And there is a change of angular momentum as the fluid passes through the impeller, imparting torque to it that leads to energy transfer. I'll discuss now about the types of turbo machines. And let us begin with a turbine. A turbine could be a thermal turbine or a hydraulic turbine. Steam turbine is an example of thermal turbine. Similarly, Kaplan turbine is, a, is an example of hydraulic machines. The turbine is called power absorbing device. And a turbine takes energy from the passing fluid. That is, the fluid is expanded as it passes through a turbine. And the pressure at the exit of the turbine will decrease. Similarly, a compressor fan or a pump is called power absorbing device. And it adds energy to the passing fluids. That means the fluid is compressed at its passes through the impeller. The pressure at the exit of the compressor will be higher than the inlet. Similarly, a turbo machine is classified by the working medium it handles. Working medium could be a compressible flow or an incompressible flow. The treatment of an impeller handling compressible flow and incompressible flow would be different. If we consider the application, as I told earlier, applications are very wide. Suppose these turbo machines are applied thermal power plant. In a thermal power plant, central devices is the turbo machine, and same as the hydraulic power plant. If you go to the thermal, thermal power plant, you will realize that the pump which compresses water 
and 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 put it to boiler similarly this team is being expanded through a turbine producing power output similarly a hydraulic power plant the central device is the turbine that takes energy from the fluid If you go to a chemical plant, you will find large numbers of pumps, compressors, and turbine. So there are heavy use of turbo machines in industries. Aero engine is a classical example the advancement of turbo machines produces the present day aero engines so in an aero engine compressors fan turbines are nothing but the turbo machines what i have told i have summarized in this page as turbo machines plays an important role in a nation's progress, economic growth and defense. Steam turbine used in conventional power plants, suppose thermal or nuclear power plant, along with hydraulic turbines, giant hold 80% of electrical energy in our country. The furthermore, there's advancements of gas turbines, compressors, fans, lead to the development of modern aero engine used for aircraft or helicopters. Large number of gas turbine, compressors, and pumps are applied in other industries such as gas and petroleum transmissions, food, paper, and metallurgical industries, chemical industry, water purification, water pumping station, and so on. The impaler can be classified further based on the direction of the flow as it passes to the impaler. Suppose axial flow impaler, radial flow impaler, and mixed flow impaler. What is an axial flow impaler? The flow enters the impaler parallel to the axis of the rotations. That means it's enter axially and leaves the impaler axially. In a radial flow impaler on the contrary, that flow comes parallel to the axis of rotation, it turns in the radial direction. When it enters to the blade, it becomes radial and it leaves in radial directions. So the difference between an axial and radial flow impairer is very wide. And the characteristics of axial flow machines and radial flow machines also have uh, uh, written here in, in, in brief. The pressure rise in axial flow machine, pressure rise per stage is low but the volume flow rate tends to be high and it also maintains high efficiency. In radial flow machines, on the contrary, the pressure rise per stage is high, but the volume flow rate tends to be low. Now, the difference between the axial and radial flow impaler is so radical 
that it becomes necessary to develop an intermediate form of impaler. That intermediate form of impaler is called mixed flow impaler, where the flow in the runner changes from an axial to more or less radial direction. This is, I have shown the pictorial view of the mixed flow impact. Here I have explained the construction and working principle of a centrifugal pump versus axial flow pump. I have taken a figure of a centrifugal machines which illustrates that it comprises of a, an impaler and a volume casing. Water is sucked by the impaler and because of its dynamic action, water is thrown at the exit at higher pressure and kinetic energy. And then water is further diffuse in the volute casing and finally high pressurized water will be achieved. On the contrary, the construction of an axial flow pump is completely different. It's having a propeller-like axial flow impeller followed by the diffuser veins. If we take a circumferential section and stretch on the plane of paper, it will be realized that the blades are arrow foil sections. So pressurized occur across the blade, however, that pressurized per stage will be limited than that of a centrifugal machines. So thus, I have illustrated here the characteristics of a centrifugal versus axial flow pump, stating that in centrifugal flow pump, the pressure rise per stage is high, while the volume flow rates tends to be low. On the contrary, in axial flow pump, pressure rise per stage is low and volume flow rate tends to be high. Let me mention here about the specific speed, however, I'll discuss in detail later. Specific speed is a single parameter that would dictate the kind of impaler one should use for a given duty point. What is the duty point? Duty point is the combination of rotational speeds of the impaler flow rate through the machines and the head developed or head dropped by the impaler. So the expression of specific speed ns is given by n root over q h to the power 3 by 4. Now if we consider pump industry, pump industry because of their legacy they use uh, British units and N in expressed in terms of RPM and Q in gallons per minute where H in feet. If we restrict to this kind of unit then if we calculate an NS and specify it to it falls in the range 500 to 2000 it would be a radial flow impaler similarly 2000 to 10,000 it would be mixed flow impaler and beyond 10,000 to 15,000 it would be axial flow machines. Here I have given examples of different kind of turbo machines through some schematic diagram. Suppose Figure A is the schematic of single stage axial compressor or pump. Here the flow in tearing parallel to the axis of rotation and leaving also parallel to the axis of the rotations. 
you look here the rotating impeller or the rotating blade is connected to the hub and which in turn connected to the rotating shaft and the casing you see the stator is connected to the casing so stator is stationary and if you take a circumferential section and stretch on a plane of paper you will find these blades are nothing but the arrow for the structures the B, the second one, is, is, is a mixed flow pump, right? Here, when the flow enters to the blade, it's neither axial nor radial, and thus at exit. C is a classical example of centrifugal machines. So a radial impellers followed by the volute casing will give us pressure rise. So this is an example of centrifugal machines. The next D one is the Fonsix turbine. So it's a hydraulic machines and this is a mixed flow impeller. The another one, this E, is e, e also an example of a hydraulic machine and is known as Kaplan turbine. It's an axial flow impeller. You see, the when the flow entering to the impeller, this is the impeller, it's axial and it's leaving also parallel to the axis of rotations. And here blades are, looks like a propeller. Aerofoils having uh, very well shaped aerofoil structures. And this is a primitive machine, it's nothing but built on wheel, which is a combination of a rotating wheel and the nozzle. I'll discuss in detail the construction of each machine. However, this Pelton well is an impulse turbine, and whereas the Kaplan is a reaction turbine. Thank you for listening.